One of the key ideas behind Taylor expansion is that it gives us polynomial approximations of otherwise complex functions to higher and higher degrees. So if you think about the graph of the exponential function and you start graphing terms in the Taylor expansion, look at the graph of 1, then 1 plus x, then 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, then 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6. You keep going with higher and higher degrees and you get closer and closer to the graph of the exponential function. Does the same thing work with, say, the sine series? Oh, yes. Look at the graph of the sine function, then consider the successive approximations. x, then x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, then x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Keep going, keep going, and you see better and better approximations. Now, in light of that, let's consider the following somewhat weird example. What happens when we Taylor expand the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 5? Well, we have to compute. We have to compute derivatives. The derivative of f is what? That's 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. To get the second derivative, well, I take the derivative of this. That's going to give me simply 6x plus 4. The third derivative of f is the derivative of the second derivative. That's simply 6. And all future derivatives, all higher derivatives, k bigger than 3, that vanishes. So what we have to do next is take these derivatives and evaluate them at the origin, where x equals 0. But that just means we pull out the constant terms in these polynomials. So the first derivative at 0 is negative 1. The second derivative at 0 is positive 4. And the third derivative at 0 is positive 6, all higher derivatives vanishing. Now, we can Taylor expand this function f. By computing what? The sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, 1 over k factorial, kth derivative of f evaluated at 0 times x to the k. Let's follow that. But what happens when k equals 0? Well, we just get 5. Where did that come from? Oh, we have to evaluate f at 0. And, of course, that's just the constant term. Next, we take the first derivative, negative 1, times x. Then, 1 over 2 factorial times the second derivative, 4, times x squared. Then 1 over 3 factorial times the third derivative at 0, 6, times x cubed. And then all the other terms are going to vanish. Yes, this is an infinite series, but in this case, most of the terms are 0. Now let's take a look at what we've got. A little bit of algebraic simplification, and aha, we see. We get the function f of x. Exactly. We recover the polynomial. This is great. The best polynomial approximation to a polynomial is itself. And the fact that we recover this polynomial sort of explains a little bit of why the Taylor formula is the way it is. Some students wonder, why do you have that 1 over k factorial in the denominator there? Well, if you take the kth derivative of a monomial of the form x to the k, what do you get? That's worth thinking about a little bit. Again, the lesson here is that the Taylor expansion is the best polynomial approximation to your function. And if your function is a polynomial, voila.